So this video has to start with a disclaimer and that it's very easy to overheat the lift motors and that just because a particular battery motor propeller works on an aircraft it doesn't guarantee it's going to work as a lift motor on one of these hovercraft. I might go out and say if you have a combination which runs cool on an aircraft it's likely to be fine and if you've got a combination that's already running hot on an aircraft it's practically guaranteed not to be fine. But those are guidelines. I will be giving the actual motors, propellers and batteries that I've used, which is not something I like doing, even though I've done it before and always put it in descriptions, but nobody reads them. And the reason I don't like giving particular recommendations, my typical running testing temperature between 5 and 15 degrees C, I have ran down at freezing occasionally and the hottest I've ever run is 20 C. So I can give a particular recommendation which might be absolutely fine at 10 degrees and could just burn up within a minute at 40. So if you're running freezing below freezing naturally you could probably get away with going higher than what I'm recommending. Because if you're looking to run in what I consider very high temperatures of 30 degrees plus then equally you might want to go the other way and just be a bit more conservative. So if you do nothing else and take nothing else away from this video please do monitor your motor temperatures. At the very least, feel for them and ideally try and get a probe into the coils and magnets and actually see exactly how close you are running, running to the limit. And again, do keep an eye on your air temperatures as well. I find I don't really have to treat aircraft any differently, regardless of summer or winter, but these hovercraft I do have to think about it a bit more. You're very likely to have to do the same. So here is a summary of everything that I've used and I'll be going through all of these shortly. But essentially motor, propeller, I was going to put particular propeller brand but they're all largely the same. I could go into a little bit more detail on that but I think these are guidelines. Uh, amps, watts at 3S, typical battery based on the number of motors that I've ran before. And an indication, and I do emphasise indication of the type of heat I was getting running at those temperature bands. So naturally green means you're fine, yellow is pushing it, red is couldn't touch 50 degrees plus. So it shouldn't be too hard to extrapolate that out to 20, 30, 40 degrees. By all means if people are finding other combinations that work at high temperatures, do get them back to me, you know, just comment and let me know what works where you are if it's much hotter than here. So the operating conditions in the hovercraft are quite different than an aircraft and it comes down to three things. Typically, aircraft propellers motor is not going to run at full throttle absolutely constantly. I know, I know there's exceptions, but generally speaking, not. Something else which happens on an aircraft is as the airspeed increases, propeller actually unloads and the current going to the motor actually drops a little bit. It gets more complicated if propellers stalled at stationary airspeed and then unstalls, but generally your measured power consumption, and I've done it by telemetry, actually does reduce as speed increases. And the third thing is if you're running a sensible cooler motor setup, you've got excellent cooling. So all of those things make it hard, not, not impossible, but pretty hard to truly cook a motor in an aircraft. So you can guess that in a lift motor for a hovercraft, all those are the other way around. Certainly this particular model, the single motor, that I absolutely expect that to run full throttle continuously. The load on the propeller is practically constant. In theory, there's little variations based on back pressure, so as control flaps open and close and the clearance to the ground changes, load on the motor theoretically does alter a bit, but I haven't been able to measure it, so yeah, it's practically a constant load. And likewise, the cooling is not great, you're getting some amount of cooling air flow based on the flow through the stability jet, at least with the configuration with the motor sitting over the stability jet, there are other motor mount, some of which I've tried, and this is by far the best for cooling, but it's nowhere near as good as being straight on the front of an aircraft. I have been using eCalc for this and it can certainly get a selection in the ballpark. The absolute first thing to do is set motor cooling to poor or very poor, depending on how conservative you want to be. And the second thing is to make sure that the propeller isn't stalled at zero airspeed. Typically your diameter to pitch of two to one so with those stipulations, eCalc will get you in the ballpark and it broadly agrees 
with what I've actually measured both in terms of power and temperature in my models. So if you've already got a subscription, might as well use it. So the 28369950kV in a 10 by 38 propeller, this is a workhorse. I've had quite a few of these motors for years. They've all proven very reliable. Now, by modern standards, these are just ancient, basically. And I know that they're from the era of 3 watts per gram. And I know that the modern multi-rotor ones are 10 watts a gram by now. They're much better magnet, magnets, tolerances, etc. So these are kind of out of date, yet it's not like they've gotten any worse. You know, they work, they work perfectly fine back in the day and still work fine just now. If somebody would make an equivalent kV motor, around about the 1000 kV, 900 range, with modern magnets and tolerances, I'd be all over it. I'd shell out an awful lot of money for it, because I'm trying to get every last bit of efficiency I can out of these things. But, you know, all of the multi-rotor ones seem to be starting at 1300 kV. I'd love a modern version of this, but it just, uh, fortunately, doesn't seem to be out there. Temperature-wise, uh, about 18 degrees, these things are really hot. Like, I think I'm measuring it 40, 50 degrees, so yeah, I'd be very hesitant to run them flat out above 20 degrees. Your mileage may vary, as they say. I used to run the 2836950 on a 9x4.3. This particular type of propeller I don't think is around anymore, so it's like an old DJI style one. It certainly ran pretty cool at my typical testing temperature, so if you're running somewhere 20, 25, 30 degrees plus, then this might be the starting point for this motor. Obviously you're going to get less airflow, less lift, but it's much easier on the power consumption. 9 by 3.8 would be even better if you're really worried about temperatures. So yeah, I've gone up to the 10 by 3.8 just because I can get away with it. And I think I could probably get away with a 10 by 4.5 when it gets colder. I think this winter I'm going to try really propping these things to the limit. The phrase vintage multi-rotor equipment kind of fills me with existential dread. Things have really moved on. These are, I'd call them 2836, I think they're branded as 2217, but it's the usual manufacturer shenanigans of, is it the stator damper or the rotor damper? These are, I think these are originally Sunny Sky, is it? Um, yeah, I've had, again, I've had these around for years, and I might as well use them. I've replaced the bearings recently. So, 880kV on a 10 by 45 now... 880 to 950 doesn't sound like that much. Power varies with kV cubed. I think a lot of people don't immediately grasp the significance of that. that 880 kV to 950 kV is, I'll put it on the screen. Now, they're assuming that the motor kV is what it says it is, it might not be. I know you can measure it, but I can't be bothered. And if you bump up the KV, it'll tend to pull the voltage down. So, not perfect, but close enough. So, I've always felt like the 950 KV with the, the, the 10 by 4.5 would be really, really pushing it. I might try it in winter, down at freezing, but I'm not going to try it just now. Yeah, again, these are uh, old, very old tech motors, but yeah, again, they've not gotten worse over time. In fact, they've gotten better because they've got better batteries and better bearings in them now. So this is the big boy. 35484, 1100 kV, 10x5, 3-blade. It's good for about 400 watts. Uh, yeah, that's some pretty substantial power. It's a pretty beefed up mount. I know you can't see it very well because I've got this uh, stability port variable veins shenanigans going on. But yeah, definitely, this motor's not a joke. Really do make sure your motor mounts and everything are proper. Otherwise, you're going to be in for a very bad time. But it's a great it's a great combination yeah, with a 5 amp power battery. This model, not getting quite the hover heat others do, but it's got great power in terms of propulsion. So I really do like this combination. Uh, but again, treat it, you should treat all motors with respect. But, you know, especially a 400 watt one.
So this three five three six six twelve fifty kV and I'm sorry I just can't be bothered putting a propeller on it just now, but I ran it with a ten by three point eight. This isn't one I recommend. I had it sitting around and figured it was worth a shot, but you know you're trying to drive a relatively small fine propeller with a relatively high kV. It's going to be noisy and inefficient, and it was. I mean, it, it worked. If you have one of these sitting around, uh, by all means try it. Maybe it might work on a better model than what I was trying it on. So I wouldn't rush out and buy this just to put in a hovercraft, but you know, it, it, it can work. It's just not necessarily one that I'd recommend. Again, ran pretty hot, even down at, you know, 10 degrees testing temperature, so I shudder to think what it might do at 30. But nevertheless, it's one that I've used, so this is why I'll let show it off. So, 3536, I forgot the number, but it's a thousand kV and it's currently in this plane and I can't be bothered taking it out, there's the truth. This is the one which on a hovercraft was definitely underpropped, like well underpropped. It ran cool even at, you know, 15 degrees testing. So, possibly if you're running somewhere very hot, this might be a good starting point. A big model with only a you know two point two amp hour it was pretty light and as I said very light on the battery, not just light model, light on the battery, ran cool. Could maybe be propped up a bit. I wonder how the ten by five three blade would work and you think, oh but it's only an extra hundred KV. Remember what I said about it's a cubic relationship? So, we could be onto something there. But again, I just thought I'd uh, make note that I have used this combination. Going to the small, cute, dinky motors now. This is 2822 171100 kV. I'm not sure if it is 1100. There was something about all oh, these are actually a thousand, but they were labelled wrong. Whatever, I want to do know is with an 8x4, this is pretty weedy. But maybe that's what you want for early testing. My very first peripheral jet skirtless craft used a pair of these. You're not going to get massive hover height or power. Maybe if you use a lighter battery, but for just testing. I suspect this is a motor that a lot of people have just got kicking around in their kind of parts closet. Um, Again, it's old tech now, you can get a motor or one that's much better, maybe not this low KV. But, you know, if you've got a couple of these sitting around, absolutely nothing wrong with trying them. Certainly the 8x4 prop was kind of a good match with it. This is 2822141450 KV, and this is definitely one where a multi-rotor uh, motor would be far better. In fact, I'm kind of tempted to try one. Very old tech motor now. Nevertheless, I've got like 10 of these, so I might as well use them. I haven't used one on a peripheral jet skirtless craft before. I've only ever used it on the kind of simple skirtless one. With a 6x4 3 blade, it's pretty, packs a pretty serious punch to the point where at 18 degrees around these, these were cooking. Like, I'm actually surprised. They're I couldn't even touch them, so that's what, 60 degrees or something like that. So again, if you've got a, a drawer full of these, and I suspect a lot of people do, because they're hardly worth anything these days, it's worth trying. Could work for, a, again, a kind of smaller, lighter skirtless craft, a pair of these, counter-rotating. So, I don't know if I can recommend it, but I have used it before, just Keeps this really keep an eye on your temperature. That's a lot of power running through a small motor. 